Welcome to my lecture online. We have discovered, as we showed in previous videos, that we were able to obtain three quantum numbers related to the Schrodinger equation that define the motion, the position, the angle of momentum, and so forth of an electron in a hydrogen atom. Matter of fact, the three quantum numbers are n, l, and m sub l, n, the principal quantum number, is associated with the energy level of the electron in the hydrogen atom. L is associated with the angular momentum of the electron in the hydrogen atom. And M sub L is associated with the orientation of the angular momentum when a magnetic field is applied. But it turns out we can find these by applying the boundary conditions required to define the Schrodinger equation in such a way that these just pop out. So those are related to some physical quantities of the electron energy-wise, motion-wise, and interaction between the spin of the electron, or I shouldn't say the spin, but the orbit of the electron with the magnetic field. But, so we know that the fourth quantum number is called the spin quantum number, written as m sub s. So what is it and where did it come from? It certainly did not come from the Schrodinger equation. Well, it turns out in 1927, Phipps and Taylor conducted an experiment which is now known as the stern gerlach experiment. And they did so by sending a beam of hydrogen atoms in the ground state, but that's the really important part of it. They had to be in the ground state and they send them through a magnetic field. Why was that so important? Because when hydrogen atoms are not in the ground state, when the electrons are in a higher orbit, they, their angular momentum could actually have different orientations. And so therefore, when you send hydrogen atoms through a beam, through a magnetic beam, they would then be deflected differently depending upon what orientation those electrons would have or the angular momentum of those electrons would have. But if you put the atoms in the ground state, they do not have an angular momentum. So therefore, they should not be affected by a magnetic field. But to their surprise, it was, they were affected by the magnetic field. The beam was split into two even though, as we mentioned, L was equal to zero and M sub L was equal to zero. So why was the beam split into two when you set hydrogen atoms in the ground state through a magnetic field? There had to be some other intrinsic property of that electron to cause that to happen. In 1929, Dirac concluded that there was an other fundamental property of the electron which they called the spin. Just like mass is fundamental property of an electron, the charge is a fundamental property, spin had to be a fundamental property of a particle, independent of its surroundings, independent of anything around it. So that means that even for a point particle, because the electron is so minute in size, somewhere the, the diameter is somewhere in the neighborhood of 1 times 10 to the minus 18 meters, still there must be something about that electron that has another property called the spin property, which is therefore affected when it's sent through a magnetic field. So a fourth quantum number was needed. We call it the spin quantum number m sub s. That means that the angular momentum has now two contributing components. Angular momentum can be defined by the orbital component, but it can also be defined by the spin component. Now, what does it exactly mean when an electron has a spin? Well, if we think of a point particle, or not a point particle, but if we think of, for, ex for example, a baseball, and let's say the baseball is spinning on its axis, well, that will cause it to have a form of angular momentum because it's spinning on its axis. There's mass away from the center of rotation that's spinning around like this, so there would be an angular momentum component to the spin action of a baseball. The question is, is that exactly the same for an electron? And the thinking is probably not. We call it the spin, but we may not think of it in, in, in the classical terms, in, in terms of the actual electron spinning around. However, there's still something that acts like it is spinning, so that's why we call it the spin quantum number, and we'll explore that just a little bit more in the future videos. But at least this one did not come from the Schrodinger equation. This came simply from an experiment that showed that when you send electrons or hydrogen atoms with electrons in the ground state through a magnetic field, the beam is split, so therefore there must be something about that property. So in other words, you can have it spinning in one direction or spinning in the opposite direction, and that would then split it up as they're sent through the magnetic field. 
So we'll take another look at what that is, but at least now we know there's got to be a fourth quantum number, and it's M sub S.